Welcome back, everyone. This is Wayne Matson with the Wayne Matson Report Sunday Roundup. And uh, before I bring Nick Bryan on, I want you to know uh, from this clip that uh, the, 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 this issue with this uh, uh, pedophilia, this, the, the, this molestation of underage kids uh, was covered by the media. Let's go back to 1982, the late Frank Reynolds, ABC anchor, reporting on this case in Congress. An FBI spokesman said today that so far the Bureau has not been able to corroborate charges that congressional pages have been pressured into sexual activity with members of Congress. And the spokesman said it's not a widespread, organized problem. Still, it is a scandal, but as Carol Simpson reports now, it cannot be considered surprising. ABC News talked with a 20-year-old former page who was interviewed by the FBI for two hours yesterday. He gave investigators the names of members of Congress and congressional staffers. He said shared sex and drugs with teenage pages three years ago. On at least one occasion, a certain uh, official in the House invited several pages out to his house where cocaine and uh, hashish and marijuana were freely available to the pages. If you could put a number on the number of congressional employees that you may have direct knowledge of involvement in illicit activity. How many would that be? Direct knowledge, 15 to 20. The names of congressmen alleged to be involved in the scandal have remained secret, but Idaho Republican Congressman Larry Craig, concerned that his name had been implicated, issued a public denial. Persons who are unmarried, as I am, uh, by choice or by circumstance, have always been the subject of innuendos, gossip, and false accusations. I think this is despicable. The charges of wrongdoing by congressmen with pages has been described in a book written by a former page. In it, he states, I knew of at least two homosexual congressmen, as did most everyone else at Capitol Page School. One of these congressmen actively sought out and apparently still seeks out homosexual relationships with minor male pages. Because he couldn't find a publisher, Stephen Ballantyne had the book published himself five years ago. It has been copyrighted by the Library of Congress and can be found on the shelves of the Senate Library in the Capitol. Carol Simpson, ABC News, on Capitol Hill. Well, there you have it. And um, uh, do we have Nick with us? Nick, are you there? I am. Oh well, Good to hear from you, Wayne. On. <laughs> well, there, there, there. You heard it. That was kind of an interesting report. Um, you, you have the FBI saying it wasn't widespread. Obviously, they were covering up. Uh, and C uh, Carol Simpson said it's not surprising this was reported. Uh, but uh, we don't. And then you top it off with the, the true to force of Larry Craig. Isn't that amazing? And then he, he came. Yeah, of course, then we found out about him again. They didn't nail him the first time when they could have. Um, but, uh, uh, but anyway, let's talk about your book, The Franklin Scandal. And, uh, it, it's, um, all about what happened. Uh, uh, well, this, a lot of this came out in the, at the, uh, mid eighties, late eighties, uh, Franklin SNL, uh, Larry King, not the Larry King retired from CNN, but L Larry King, who was an up, up and coming Republican, black Republican, who obviously they had higher hopes for until they got caught up in this whole thing out of Omaha. So uh, why don't you just uh, kind of briefly go over the highlights of the book. Fascinating read. It's something I've looked into. And it's also a network that I, when I was a naval officer in, in Coos Bay, Oregon, uh, my own CO was uh, caught up in that. And I worked with the FBI and Naval Investigative Service to nail him in a sting operation. He was court-martialed, but... I found out later he was that, that that network went all the way up to the White House, and, and that's something that you also discovered. Yes, the uh, the Franklin scandal is uh, truly truly a, a tragic story. It's about an interstate pedophile network that flew kids from coast to coast for a, approximately a decade and uh, destroyed scores and scores and scores of children, and basically did it with impunity. And um, I worked on the book for seven years, and I traveled 40,000 miles. And, and a lot of the book is proved uh, through sealed grand jury documentation. I, I spent a lot of time with it because I knew that I really had to, had to nail it. I had to prove it. And um, because what I was saying goes against the grain of what 
the vast majority of Americans think. Um, and what the Franklin scandal talks about is this huge interstate pedophile network that was covered up by the Department of Justice, the, the Secret Service, the FBI, and also uh, different entities within uh, Omaha law enforcement. And it went to Washington, D.C. Actually, I've got about 175 of the Ring's flight receipts, and the vast majority of those receipts go to Washington, D.C., where there was a house that was wired for audiovisual blackmail that was owned by another Republican power broker, <laughs> Craig Spence. Right. And and they just flew these kids around with impunity, and uh, they got a lot of kids out of uh, uh, Boys Town, uh, the great American right. icon. Um, right. They got kids out of the foster care system, and they also got kids that kind of fell between the cracks um, right. that, found, that found themselves on the streets. And it's truly, uh, as I said earlier, a tragic story. And, and what happened was um, social services in Nebraska found out about it. A couple of kids came forward um, um, and just spilled their guts about the whole thing. The first kid that came forward had been flown to Chicago and also to New York to pedophilic orgies. And uh, she had, to this day, she says that she saw a very influential, famous politician right. at the pedophilic orgy in Chicago. And uh, she came forward reluctantly. She was in a, a foster care home that was that was truly barbaric. I mean, what these foster parents did to these kids was uh, pretty unbelievable. There, there were eight kids in this foster care home. And they right. were starved, beaten, and uh, a couple of them were sexually abused. And then the foster care parents eventually pimped the girl out to Lawrence King and this interstate pedophile network. Right. Well, she came forward, and um, and, and and her report eventually uh, got into the hands of social services. And social services went to both state and federal law enforcement and said, you know, we have an interstate pedophile network, that, and the epicenter of it is Omaha, Nebraska. And, and state and federal law enforcement did absolutely nothing, just just completely ignored them, like it would go away. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, a Senate committee was formed, a uh, Nebraska Senate subcommittee was formed. And uh, Lawrence King looted the Franklin Credit Union for $40 million, and the credit union was only supposed to have, like, about $2.5 million in it. So these senators thought to themselves, well, you know, I mean, how can you be looting a credit union for $40 million? It's only supposed to have $2.5 million in it. And they, and then they find out that it, that the credit union had been audited in four years. So, so they knew that something was rotten in the state right. of Denmark. That they just thought it was financial crimes, but once they formed the subcommittee, these social, these ranking social services people came to them and said, you know, um, financial crimes are just a fraction of this. I mean, Lawrence King is running this huge interstate pedophile network. So then started digging into those allegations, and then that's where it really gets uh, where you see a lot of judicial malfeasance and also uh, heavy-handed federal malfeasance. Right, and you, you mentioned Craig Spence, of course, and isn't it interesting who he worked for before he got involved with, uh, you know, the, the, this business? Uh, he was he was an employee of ABC News, right? He was an employee of ABC News, and then he was actually a war correspondent in Vietnam. And right. it's kind of interesting. King was in Southeast Asia. Lawrence E. King was in Southeast Asia at approximately the same time um, in Thailand. So there's <laughs> kind of, it's, it, that's well, kind yes, of we, we certainly know more about Thailand, of course. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a magnet and something that I looked at with uh, Dennis Astor, who hated flying domestically, he had no problem apparently flying all those many hours to Bangkok uh, for various uh, reasons which will <laughs> which I, I've written about extensively too but but uh, that now this whole thing with the Franklin uh, cover-up Lawrence King is interesting because what he, he didn't he also keynote one of the Republican conventions sort of like another candidate we saw a low-level uh, state senator from Illinois and in, in Boston in 2004 uh, Lawrence King was being looked at as a potential uh, national Republican figure was he not uh, well, actually, he was kind of a uh, national figure. He, uh, yeah. sang, he he didn't keynote the 1984, but he sang the national anthem at the 1984. Okay, right. 
Republican convention, and he threw uh, huge bashes, uh, both at the 84 and at the 88 Republican convention. And uh, he threw a bash, and he and Jack Kemp were uh, the point men for the bash. And there was actually a videotape shown to the people that attended the party, uh, and it had King and Jack Kemp speaking together. And, of course, Jack Kemp, uh, there's been numerous sources that have come out and said that uh, Jack Kemp is uh, gay, and or was gay. And yeah. it's kind of interesting, because uh, King was very much behind, uh, metaphorically speaking, uh, Jack Kemp's run for Congress, and right. uh, was going to f- uh, throw a fundraiser for Jack Kemp in uh, Nebraska, but for some reason Jack Kemp kind of pulled out of it at the last minute. So uh, King and Spence, or King and uh, Jack Kemp were very close. But uh, King was enmeshed with uh, with with a bunch of Republican big shots. He was enmeshed with uh, uh, inner members of the Reagan uh, cabinet and also inner members of the uh, Bush cabinet. And right, uh, right. he was, uh, from what I understand, uh, fairly close to uh, Reagan and also close to Bush, and um, also very very close to uh, William Casey. So uh, uh, now, we, now we get into the more interesting aspect of the intelligence agency's involvement with with some of these, and we know there were all kinds of scandals and in, involving groups like the Finders, uh, where there were uh, uh, reports of child abuse. But hold on, uh, Nick, we've got a break, and we'll be right back after this short break with Nick Bryant, the author of the Franklin Scandal. This is Wayne Madsen from Washington. 